So hey guys and welcome back to uh, the second live stream today. In this live stream we'll be building the output buses from our RAM. So we've done the input buses earlier this afternoon and now we're looking at the output buses. So uh, yeah, this basically means taking all of these from top downwards uh, oaring them all together and then running the bus background uh, to the uh, inputs of the registers. So uh, let's give it a go. Um, I think we'll take each of these vertically downwards um, like so, oaring them as we go. So in order to do this uh, I'm going to write all ones to the memory and then hmm, that's interesting, why is that there? I'm gonna write all ones to the memory and yeah, that will enable me to see uh, when where the data is basically. So to do that, uh, we need to write to our A register to start with. That writes all ones to our A register, which because the output of the register is inverted logic, we can see that's all zeros there. And then we'll write this into the memory. Uh, at the moment, we're dealing with uh, the farthest corner and the topmost layer. So again, we need to write into the PC register. So we'll write to the program counter and then we'll write to the memory. Write is enabled. So toggle the clock, do the write, and then we'll also do this into each of the other layers. So again, to get to the other layers, write to the program counter, Right to the memory. And this is obviously what we will be doing using the control path in future. Right to the program counter. Right to the memory. And then the last layer, bottommost layer. write to the program counter, and then we go and write to the memory. And that should give us all ones in each of those layers. So if I go look at the outputs from this layer, and in fact I can set the time to night so we can see the distance more easily. Yep, all those outputs are on. Oh, of course it's underneath this, isn't it? Yeah. And then I'll go and change the address. Uh, Minecraft simulation is clearly struggling with this a bit because it's creating these oscillations uh, when it shouldn't be. A bit frustrating. Um, that's the only... Uh, it's not the only glitch that we're guessing. I don't really want to have to clear the memory, but I think I'm going to in order to save that. Uh, in order to fix that. So that should stop all of that oscillation. Unfortunately, we'll also clear the values we just wrote. Um, Alright, so there's no oscillation. Now I need to go and do some of those writes again. So 
Let's do the first right and then hope that we don't get any oscillations appearing. Doesn't look like... Look like that have been. So let's... Uh, right to the program counter and we'll just gradually go through and reset those values. Okay. Uh, so there's some kind of instability here. Very frustrating because causing these to glitch out when they shouldn't do. That was just changing the address, it shouldn't have even affected those wires. Okay, well we're going to have to fix this oscillation first, uh, or at least understand where it's coming from before we can carry on doing anything else, because uh, otherwise it will cause a serious problem later on. So, done the clear. The clear is still enabled. And I'm just going to check whether any more of those are oscillating, and this time I'm going to check a bit more thoroughly. That we're not getting any yeah weird oscillations now I'm gonna go and disable that clear the whether that causes any problems that hasn't immediately caused any it doesn't seem. So next it's a case of testing the dress change and the right. So here I'm going to set the address for the first layer. Right, and that's caused two of these to oscillate. So something is going wrong when I change the address. Uh, how on earth is Minecraft getting that wrong? Okay, so something in here is destabilizing it because it's um, you know, set, setting that clock signal as stabilized the value. So I guess it's that these two things are disabling at slightly different times and that's resulting in strange oscillation that Minecraft can't deal with. Um, so I need to try and see what's causing that. The thing we changed was the layer enable um, coming in and that's Uh, that's going to be wire, is it? That's this one, right? So this is the right enable, this is the column enable, which is 
off and this one is the layer enable uh, so this layer is enabled but the column isn't if I change the layer enable That's not caused a serious problem immediately. Um, let's have a look at what the outputs of our program counter register are doing on each you know, event. Um, possible that. They're causing a serious problem in some way. They oscillate too much. Oh, that's not going to work because that's selected at the moment. Um, hmm. if I can see that from the program counter register. Or I can. Ah, that's interesting. That's going to two bits. That's definitely not right. Uh, something's gone very wrong there. So, uh, that was supposed to connect to that one, and that's supposed to connect to that one. That's interesting. That mistake repeated. That mistake is repeated. Great, so all of our registers are slightly broken. <laughs> I might have fixed it for that. Um, I don't know how that affects what I was just doing. The address is now correct and uh, got oscillation in all sorts of different places. Not really consistent either. Okay.
see whether I can trigger the stability in the circuit manually. Not seem to cause it to have a problem. Just sending random pulses down here to see whether it causes the memory to uh, bug out in any way. And uh, seem to have done so far, so something else is going wrong here that I don't understand. Um, so our address is first layer, final column. Um, See if I write something to it, whether that A works and B, whether it causes any kind of issue, seem to have done. Uh, so. Gonna create an oscillator over here to see whether it's something to do with the simulation distance, maybe. Um, if it is, that's a really, really annoying problem to have. Um, create an oscillator out here. So the oscillator you can still see it, it's still working, still see it, it's still working. And I'm gonna fly all the way over to our program counter and hopefully it doesn't stop. Right. It stopped. So that means that part of our circuit is actually out of range when I'm stood over here. Um that's frustrating. So it's actually stopping the simulation of these parts when I'm over there changing the program counter address. Um, the, yeah, kind of difficult to see how to fix that. Um, other than bringing these control signals in so that I can be in the middle of the of the computer while playing. Oh, hey, Arch Gaming, you're back. Good to see you again. Sorry, it takes YouTube. For some reason, the live chat takes ages for it to appear on my screen. 
I wonder whether it's my internet connection can't quite cope with everything at once. Okay, so in order to see whether this is a simulation distance problem, I'm going to build a wire that uh, actually just brings this control signal out uh, um, brings this clock signal out to the middle of the computer and then I can test whether that instability is being caused by uh, the simulation distance or whether it's being caused by something else within Minecraft that I don't understand uh, yet. So This isn't a permanent wire, I'll destroy it again later once we've understood where the problem comes from. Okay, so this is roughly near the middle, I don't want to have to be too precise. Um, so this is going to be our temporary clock. If it turns out the only way to test this is by running these signals to the middle, then it's going to make life even more difficult. Okay, now this on. Across, boosting the power into the computer. Yeah, so again, <laughs> simulation cutting out seems entirely sure though. If I stand here, so I should be able to change the address here and see the result come through. First I'm going to check that none of these are unstable right now. I think they are. I don't see any obvious flickering on the Data latches. So now that I do this, I should see, or when I do this, I should see those address lines over there change. Okay, so it's just the angle. Changed. Seem to have done so. Uh, did I get it wrong? Oh, I'm one block short on power. Wow. Okay. That's enabled, that's like that. Oh, this is ridiculous. Okay, I have no idea what state the output of this is in now. Okay, so it's saved that value, so let's switch back. Uh, we've now got instability in the memory because we're out of range. Um, so let's clear everything. That should stabilize. Re-enable everything, 
and then uh, when I pulse this clock, that wire in, address wire in front of us should switch off. It does and everything goes haywire. Across all of the layers. The only thing that changed was this address wire. Um, so I'm going to try and trigger that problem by placing a switch here and Where's our layer enable for this? Yeah, it's there. It's not triggering the same problem. I wonder whether it's multiple of these change at once. Possible. So even if I let's just, and I force this so that the value on the address lines doesn't change, the only thing that's going to change is this uh, this value here is going to toggle. Well, it's not going to toggle. It's just going to stay the same actually. Okay, so that causes like a one tick pulse over here I can see and that one tick pulse is coming from this well I need to identify exactly which line it is so let's see if I can identify which column it is quite hard to tell have to put lamps and be able to see which of the two that is. Um, so go debug. Right, so unfortunately those lamps don't react fast enough because it is just a one tick pulse uh, causing the problem. Let's see if torches will. The left hand one. Yep, it's definitely the left hand one of these causing the problem. The left hand one of these is the column enable 
that. No, it's the layer enable. Ah. Oh. Really? Oh no, it is the column. Yeah, 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 it's this column that's having a one tick pulse sent down it. And I reckon if I delete this switch here, we'll see one tick pulses on uh, all of these lines. So I'm watching that redstone repeater over there where the row enable is. Yeah, and that's oscillating one tick as well. And that appears to be causing this problem, um, this glitch. If I clear everything out to stabilize it all, and then apply a one tick pulse to one of these columns, I should be able to trigger the same issue. Uh, so I'm going to try it on this column, I guess. Um, so to start with, enable that column on here, and then a one tick pulse. Oh, didn't cause it. So one pick tick pulse from off to on the off again doesn't cause it, but how about on to hmm. Yeah, so that triggered something. Uh, so let's go right to that very end. One and see what's going on here. So, uh, here's my column enable, and um, I can control that through this here. There we go, so that's caused the problem. But by toggling this, I'm toggling these wires here. That's the only way this is powered. It's triggering, triggering a toggle on these two clock wires. Um, Huh. So I power this one. That just passes on the oscillation to the next one. I power this one, we get stability and stability. So, um, The problem with sending a one tick pulse is this line, I guess. Um, so that's controlled by this. Um, it's normally powered at the moment. One tick pulse causes the problem. Uh, that powered on, that's off. For a single... ...tick... ...causes an issue. Now I need to try and place a one tick pulse on here. Yeah, that triggers the problem. Ah, 
Right. So a one tick pulse into the clock signal here causes an instability in these gates in this data latch, which I think is probably just a Minecraft bug because it's not supposed to happen. Um, it shouldn't be an issue and this, this certainly shouldn't occur. Um, what this means is I need at least uh, one tick, uh, at least two tick pulse going into all of these signals. Now I can fix this in a bunch of different ways. Um, the well, one way to fix it would be to isolate the address wires coming in um, and then make sure that the clock and clear signals are never a one tick pulse either. Um, yeah, that's probably the easiest because otherwise I have to go modifying every clock signal on every memory cell and I've got to make space and I'd have to make space for uh, for, for the two tick sender, um, which isn't going to be feasible. So I'm going to build a two tick extender on each of these control wires and we'll see if that prevents the problem from occurring. So this causes a one tick delay, this causes a two tick delay, it causes uh, ultimately that's a two tick extender um, on that. So uh, toggling the Toggling the clock like this shouldn't, sorry, the clear like this very quickly shouldn't cause instability anymore. I wonder whether if I, if I delete the two tick sender, uh, whether I can trigger instability, possibly not. So we need the same on the clock to protect that and then the same on the address lines and maybe that will fix the problem. Yeah, so you see there when it's a one tick thing the, the wire doesn't switch off. Um, and we're going to do the same for the write enable won't clash with the one next to it, fortunately. Oh, yes, it will. Damn. Um, okay. Hold it up from where we are. The question, of course, is does the power from the second one reach far enough up be repeated. It doesn't. Uh, that's going to be a really serious problem because it has to reach far enough up. Um, means that the repeater has to come into this one. Uh, Okay, so that's where that is. I'm just going to have to build the sender behind these repeaters, otherwise it's space really. So that means stepping down each of these. Room. So if I unpower this, 
switch somewhere that's going to cause it to get powered. So there's our two tick extender for the clear. Same for the clock. Obviously, I could uh, design this so that the whole machine, the clock, is be take extended, uh, and I might do that later. For now, I just want to make sure that I can fix this instability in the memory um, without having to think about the rest of the components. Uh, although our registers are built on the same design, uh, meaning they're clear and clock signals will also have the same problem so eventually I'll come back and uh, kill this, delete this two tick extender on all of these things um, here but not on the address um, buses. Because it will still be needed on the address buses. So you can build a two tick extender for this one by repeating that there. Hopefully there's going to be enough power to reach ground, although there probably won't be. Oh, there is. Okay. So that's a two tick extender on that address line. And then I need to try and figure out how to make space or to hit extender on each of these address lines. So on that one, and this one's a little bit more tricky. Um, uh, but the, this, the repeater needs to come here because otherwise the power is going to be from a different point. It won't reach point. So that's a valid two tick extender for that. Um, for this one, again, I'd want a repeater coming in for one of these. I'd like it to be coming in there, really. this out in a moment. Um, these I don't want to end up connected. Uh, I'll step that repeater back, otherwise I end up with a bigger problem. So This block is going to end up powering this because it's got a repeater going into it. Uh, this is the other problem, of course, is where these values are getting repeated to boost their power. Um, I don't know if there actually is space to build one of these two tick extenders in line. That's, maybe I can do this using a 
using knot gates. As long as the output knot gate there. And too high up. But I could place an output knot gate here as well. Buy it with power based on this one. And the inverter for that. This block here, so that should work. I hope. So now when I play around with this, oh, this needs a repeater in it to lay it by one. Not sure if that's working or not. No, nope, that's not working. Um, well that's switching off. Allowing a one tick pulse through here, which isn't what I want. Uh, oh, this isn't going to work. Um, hmm. Okay. Uh, I need to be there coming from over here not then stepped down into that one that's okay if I do this so now Now it's always a two tick delay and the power's coming from the right distance on that line and on this line. Power's running out there. Just uh, force the clear, make sure everything's stable. Now I need to build a similar kind of circuit on this one. We go up one, um, another one like this. Oh, that's just perfectly misaligned, isn't it? Um,
problem with this is it's overlapping that. That's still not going to work. Got enough space to really build these here. We have to build them some other way. I raise this up. That's powered by that. Up here. Cross like. I increase that by one tick. That should work. That, that, then one tick. That should get that working. Uh, this might then have space to be like this. If I boost the power like so, and then this one I can do corner here. Oh no I can't because Gotta be around after this torch here, and there's the first output. So that's getting deleted and coming this way. Turns out those lamps were useless anyway because it's a one tick pulse that I'm trying to detect so those lamps wouldn't have shown me what was going on. Alright, so now if I one tick pulse this line... be on for at least two uh, if I... yeah that's why it's not working. I've missed a block. This one's unnecessary. Okay so that should protect all of our address lines. I'm now going to reselect the program counter register. I'm going to clear the memory. That should clear our entire memory. And now when I toggle the clock here we shouldn't see any stability. Instability, sorry. Because our address lines are protected. So the only way they cause a problem is if we, yeah, it should now be impossible to one tick pulse the address lines um, and the right clock and clear. So I'm going to try programming our memory. Oh my god, this stream is now an hour long of just trying to fix this. Uh, Oh, just trying to fix clock issues. Uh, so 
is addressing the first layer I should have been addressing the first layer and I should have been writing all ones uh, pulse the clock again so possible that the that I've messed something up somewhere and the power is not reaching as far as it should yeah so one of these uh, I've destroyed something I shouldn't have done yeah just that wire there and uh, we dive through this So that wire there was uh, this signal coming through, which is one of the column enables. I think it probably should have written to A column, but dive down and see if I'm not writing any data at all. Should have written it to those far blocks. Data's all ones coming in. Enabled in every way. Uh, oh, is the clear signal still low? Again, negative logic. So, oh, hi, uh, Tigran. Thanks for uh, thanks for the comment. <laughs> yeah, uh, I'm not sure I'm a genius, but um, trying to figure this stuff out takes a bit of effort. Okay, so the clear is negative logic, which means that off is enabled and on is disabled. So I, I messed that up. So now when I toggle the clock, hopefully it will write some data. Hey, we successfully wrote some data. For the memory on the far outputs and if I fly back up and toggle the clock on the program counter uh, it will not cause a one tick pulse through the address lines because we've protected them um, so even though it wants to so if we actually kind of stand just where we can see that program counter register on the kind of edge of top edge of my screen there we can see that stuff does kind of toggle in there. Um, yeah. All right. So we've written to the memory. Um, this was supposed. To, this stream was supposed to be about the data lines, uh, data output buses uh, doesn't seem to have quite got there so so far <laughs> um, so I was trying to write to this uh, thing up here and write to the other four uh, the other four cells I know that when we're stood at the program counter we're not quite in range of far bit of memory so I need to fly back and forth to Toggle all of this and keep it stable. Okay, so that should have written to that far one over there, and I can see some glowing blocks, so that's good. And then uh, let's set the program counter to the next layer. Change our address lines. Again, if we're lucky, we fix the instability. Save. That should write to the next layer. Uh, we're only going to see outputs on the layer that's selected. 
Um, although apparently that's not happening right now. Uh, we've not written to this layer's outputs when we should have done. Where did we write to? So we've got power, got protection from one tick pulse going through, coming up. That's powered correctly. That's correctly powered. This is. Oh. <laughs> this still has a switch in it. <laughs> Oh, I hope there's nowhere else in this circuitry where I've left random switches lying around that I didn't mean to. Oh god. Right, so let's try again. So that's second layer output, that's the third layer output and we have now written to it. Thank goodness for that. Uh, let's try writing to the fourth layer output, which we've seen before. So we'll save program counter and then we'll write to the memory. And we should see, yes, we've written to it. Okay. We might now be able to build our data output bus an hour and five minutes into the stream where this is what we were supposed to be doing in the first place. Not sure where this comes out of power, to be honest. There we go, that's where it runs out of power. And um, similarly to going up, when we're coming down, we can extract power from the block, go one across, and start going down again. We're aiming to link up with this uh, output down here and to OR, or build an OR gate basically. Um, so that one connects up. Now, building this OR gate's a bit tricky. Um, so here's the power coming in. Um, so we should have power from this repeater up here will power that block and power the lamp. This will also power this block. So be able to extract that with a repeater. Carry on going down. Now because the outputs are all uniform uh, I'm going to build this for a single bit and then copy it across for all of the other bits. Um, with any luck, we'll have a perfectly working output bus for each of the columns quite quickly and then we just link them up at the bottom. I suspect this one's going to be one further out than it was on the Yeah, so it's offset by one compared to the previous layer, is that? I started going down immediately after the lamp on that one, and on this one, not so. So I'm going to try and build this up um, so that it fits the same pattern. Um, for building the OR gate. So 
that's where the repeater should be and that's where the block behind it should be that's where the power should come down to and because we're using the repeater on the upper bit this will now hopefully work just fine go This is a really weird way of building an OR gate, um, but it's uh, suitable for our purposes, fortunately. Build that in there, that there, and then that's to come up. This is power coming. Ah, oh, oh, there's one offset from where it should be. Always forget. This is power coming all the way down from the top, only from the top, um, to these blocks. None of the other outputs are affected by this. Um, one giant set of all gates. There we go. Great, so that's all down there, and if I delete this for a second, we can see how this works. By placing a torch here, we put power into this block, um, and that triggers the output. And in order to complete this, we have to use a repeater here to extract the power from that block. Um, nothing else will do, and then that becomes the output from that column that bit of that column. So now I need to copy what I've just built across all of the bits here. So um, I need my low starting point for the clone down here. Uh, I'm just going to build downwards. Not going to matter if I copy what's below me. So again, just going into Notepad and writing down the coordinates. Uh, so that's 2, 4, 8, 28, minus 2. I know that the coordinates above me are going to be 2, 4, 8, some Y number, and minus 62, because we built this all in a line here, except that the uh, 2, 4, 8 will change based on based on how far out this goes. So if I look, uh, I'm now at 258. That goes 10 blocks out. Um, and then I need to know the upper Y coordinate. Oh, oh, that's one block. This is one block further out. Why is this? Hmm. Okay, that's weird. That's one block uh, that out. How is that possible? Uh, I build this. Oh, I built this slightly differently. Okay, let's um, let's just fix that. I want it to be identical, otherwise it was a serious problem. Okay, so. 5, 8, yeah, and then the Y coordinate is up here somewhere. I'm going to copy from this Y coordinate, which is 81 up. And then I know that I'm just going 1, 2 on the Z each time. Um, and hopefully if I've got this right, I'm not going to mess up any of the circuitry behind here. You know, it doesn't change any of this stuff, it just changes uh, the structure of this output lamp bit is where this is coming in. Oh, and I've just seen the problem. Where this is stepping down onto the output wire, it's not going to connect out. So I'm going to have to do the copy and then figure out um, 
figure out for myself how to get that wire to come in. Um, well, who knows? Um, if I... Ah, oh, so in this case there's no block next to it cutting it off, so it might just work anyway. Um, the redstone wire on top might connect up and it might just might just all fix itself. Um, let's try it. I'm just going to find out if this goes wrong, then <laughs> I'm going to have a lot of undoing to do. 248, 28, minus 62. Uh, 258, 81, minus 62, then lower coordinates of these, so 248, 28, and minus 64. I'm just going to check I got that coordinate. Ah, uh, you know what, there. So there you go, uh, that's our next one coming down. And as predicted, that wire linked up, so that didn't cause a problem. Um, if I delete the power there, place some power here, we should see that still gets powered, so that's fine. That worked, shockingly. Um, that should have worked all the way down here as well. Good. So now I'm just going to copy that across for each one. Minus 66, minus 68, minus 70, minus 74. And did I miss one? Two, three, four, five, six. Oh, I've missed one. And minus 76. So there's the verticals for that column of stuff. Um, and then I can in theory do the same on this, so that's minus 30 where we're at. I know I can do multiples, uh, multiple of these at once, but I uh, can't be bothered to figure out the layout for that, and this is all just fairly easy anyway, so. Great. That should have linked up all the outputs for that one. Right, next. Uh, let me just check I lined that up right. Yeah, I lined that up right. So the next one, we do actually have world file backups, so if uh, something goes really wrong here, then. then I have a way back to a working state. Um, All of that. Do the final bit on that one. That's the third column, and the final column over here on thirty-four. Done. So that's our four output columns linked together in a reasonably compact amount of space so that when we're standing in the middle of the computer it will, will hopefully just work and 
the last thing to do is to link together these outputs um, into a bus that goes back and I need to work out where that bus is going to appear above the surface, uh, above the main build surface for this uh, RAM basically, well for these registers essentially. Um, so what I quite like is for it to come back in between these two columns of RAM. That's what I'm going to try and build. Um, hoping this stream will be at most about two hours uh, before this gets done. Um, or it is done. Okay, so that's extracting the power from there. And what I want is to bring this round. And I remember I've got to all together the right signals from these uh, data lines. Um, I can't just all together any random set of things. Um, I don't entirely know how I'm going to do that. Boring. What I do know is I need to preserve the order of the bits as well. Um, so I, when I'm facing this way, if I pivot the bits round to the right and then, then the low bit is on the right hand side and when I pivot them back to the left and then left again, the low bit still ends up on the right hand side so that, that will all be fine. As long as I don't cross these over, these will all end up uh, kind of pivoted the right way around. Uh, let me see then how much space I have between these uh, memory, between these columns. That's uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That's all of our outputs and uh, we need a way to be able to or in value of two of these things coming together and keep going without building layer upon layer upon layer of uh, bus signals. Um, I'm going to step this out and down. We'll come back to this bus going back the other way in a minute. So each of these will come out and down, and I want to result in us coming across like this of a tiny bit more room to play with. So I want this across, down. And I need bits from here to be in the same pattern. So that I can then bring them back up.
So this is also a step down and then it steps back up. This is a step I'm backwards this way. Step back up, get to the same height. That will then form a repeating pattern where these are the ores essentially, the ore gates where those wires join, and do the same thing on each of these. So the corner of these forms the ore gate. This, this last one is kind of a special case because it's where I want the bus to go back. Um, here it's got to run underneath the other wires coming over the top of it. I built this higher up if I hadn't stepped everything back, but I think that might come in useful later. That's like that's not. my aim here is to build something where the main bit of it can just be cloned across the other three columns here. Um where it will all just link up. Uh, and then I can fill in the repeaters afterwards. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Oh, I'm stepping each of these up. They go on, but uh, This will stop. What? I miss a bit. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I've misaligned something here.
Ah, this is the one that I've aligned. Go. Means the rest of these are place. We'll come back to that. Alright, so getting there with this. Now we're able to pour together various bits um, coming from the outputs in a pattern that will repeat nicely for the other uh, the other columns. Now the only thing I have not done yet is put the repeaters in to boost the power in the right places, uh, which will involve setting the well manually kind of fiddling with the relevant outputs uh, to see where the power flows. But we'll deal with that in a minute. Let's go set some of these outputs by hand. Oh, you can put switches underneath. Ah. I don't remember being able to do that in the past. That's a new thing. That will set all of our outputs, allowing me to see where repeaters are going to be needed um, for the power to flow this way across. So I want to try and standardize the power coming that way, and then all I've got to do is uh, extend power to reach that um, just shy of working. Close enough. <laughs> Close E. Okay, and now I need to build going across as though power were coming from the previous uh, 
from the, from the column over there behind me. And to see... I'm going to figure out where those repeaters are that I just placed. Power everything up as though the power was coming from here. Figure out where the repeaters go and then just blown away. So, uh, yeah, this one is one offset and then these are in line. So, one offset and the rest are in line. That's where these repeaters are. Place an extra block in order to put a, tor uh, a switch down. Put a torch down. That's where those are, and then I want to switch these off. Kind of neat that I can debug like that by placing switches underneath. I did not realize I was going to be able to do that. Power is just running out as we get to this one. So if I step all of these ones down, if I actually step this one down as well, then I can place a repeater, the one below, to extract power from the block behind it, thereby getting myself an easy booster. Such. And now we have to see where the power runs out. Uh, so in this case, it's running out at one block short. It is one block short. Uh, in this case, it's oh, it's also one block short. And here it's going to be one block short. That means I've pulled those three repeaters back block and this one I've, un I've not changed it. Oh. Is this all going to be one block off of fulfilling the need? Uh, in which case I'm going to use torches to get a longer distance repeat. So in order to produce that I can place torches along here and then I just have to figure out where the inverters are going to go if they were placed on these um, I need to make sure that the power reaches all the way. Benefit me. I'm not actually going to extend the distance because this is 16 blocks already. Uh, 
berries. I'll run out. I can place a repeater there. That mean I can move this back up to where it was. Yes. There is a way that I can these guys forward again to their original line by simply adjusting where I was going to put the repeater. Oh, one then isn't needed either. That one's not needed either. Oh, but they will be needed for... Oh, they're needed for this, aren't they? They're needed for the output from... These repeaters. So that's the pattern. Um, great. Now to try and figure out how to clone it. So coming down far enough, far enough back. So again, just writing down the coordinates in notepad, 250, 26, minus 47. And we are how many blocks over from this? We are three blocks over. So uh, this line here is in line, so we're going to go three blocks over, one block up, Uh, and actually we need to be four blocks over to, so we're not overlapping by accident. This is 267, 30, minus 16. And I want to be placing it at 250, 26, and uh, minus 15, if I go one this way. So clone, 250, 26, minus 47, 267, 30, minus 16, 250, 26, minus 15, 250, 26, 7, 730, minus 16, 250, 26, minus 15, good what happens. Okay, that seems like it connected up correctly, as I intended. And then here I'm at 16, so I need to clone to 17. Plus 17. Okay, and obviously all of these extra bits of wire here are 
entirely unnecessary so they can get deleted because the more wire you have the slower minecraft actually goes when it comes to simulating um is a bit weird i learned this online uh for a forum so I believe the advice of the forum and destroy as much of it as possible that isn't needed. Really these step downs in the corner aren't needed either, but it's the same amount of wire. Alright, and that's that for those three columns. Um, if I now, let's say for example we select the first column and write to it, um, we should then see the output on the final thing change. So this is our layer select. These are our column select, that was our row select. Program counter. Um, that will change which address we're selecting. Hopefully we don't see any oscillation, I'm just going to double check that. I think we fixed it, but always worth rechecking. Yeah. Our output is all ones. Um, right now there should be nothing written for that uh, memory that we just selected. It should be this column in all zeros. All of the outputs are zero. And even those ones are zero. Now I'm going to write to that first column, topmost byte, uh, in terms of layers. So the write enable is down here. There's the write enable, which is enabled, pulse the clock nice and slowly. There we go, all our outputs switched on. We've got all ones coming down here. All ones coming across, all ones coming across, all ones coming across. Good, so that's given us correct uh, result essentially. Um, and now we need to use a similar thing for the boring of these uh, bits, but. Um, coming from the other direction. So uh, this time we're coming from here, stepping down onto these. Let's try and get this as far across as possible. That's our first bit. Um, ah. That's interesting, if I spin these bits around Oh, I've connected this up wrong. This isn't the right one to be connecting to that. Uh, this bit should be all the way back over here somewhere. 
this one that comes around that corner. This is what I meant earlier about making sure I don't invert any of the bits uh, connecting up to each other. Um, like it's really important that these end up the same way round. Now we can see this was connected to the left hand most, this is connected to the left hand most, so that's the right way round to have wired these bits together. Um, almost did that wrong. The thing that caused me to notice was that it didn't form a nice uh, step down pattern. All of these, a lot of computer architecture is about spotting patterns, uh, structures, quite often very visual things, not just with Minecraft, but in general hardware is a physical thing uh, as much as it is a design of any other kind. It's a physical thing, it's a mathematical thing, uh, and as with maths, physics, everything, it's just spotting those patterns. Seeing where stuff might be going wrong that you didn't expect it to. This might cause an issue because uh, it was a problem that I can't. Oh no, I can just do it here, can't I? Yeah, it's just the intersection is in a slightly different place where I was expecting. Oh. Oh, I must have miscounted the bit somewhere. Something's been connected twice because that should have been connected to that one. That should have connected to that one. That was supposed to connect to that one. Have I gone the wrong way? This is supposed to connect to this one. This was supposed to connect to... Oh, I've done the same mistake again that I was talking about earlier. Um, the bits being in the right place. Tell I'm getting tired. There we go. Right, so I'm going to place the repeaters to boost the power from these ones round first. Um, oh. 
and then I'll go and do the setting up of the data for the next, but for the fourth column coming across. Also trying to make sure I don't accidentally block off one of these lines coming down into. Like the power's reaching those already. And again, I just want to unify all of the points where the power comes. That does reach that. So if I quite perfect, but These last couple of bits are just going to be slightly different. Most of them are consistent. Right, and now I need to act these. Right, and now if I just briefly stable power from these, I'll come back and re-enable it later, and override data of these. Oh, that's the wrong block to have placed that on. Okay. And yeah, and then repeaters. We go one block further. No,
So all of these outputs should now be powered. Two arms. Might be wrong here. Come on, let me down. There we go, we now have eight powered bits. Switch all these off. Well, not almost exactly two hours now, and uh, most at the point where these output buses output bus, sorry, just one of it, uh, done. So, that's the output coming from all four columns, all four layers, uh, and then both rows we already did um, coming through. That's what all of this underground circuitry was already. Um, so now we just need to bring this across, but I also need to figure out where it needs to finish in order for it to line up with roughly with the arithmetic unit, uh, not the arithmetic unit, sorry, the registers. So I'm going to go over here, up down, and just leave a little marker. This may not be exactly where the bus ends up finishing in future, um, but it's a good enough approximation for now. I must have gone past it just as I was about to go past it. Build myself a little barrier that I can run into. And I know the spacing of the bits so I can actually just run back and forth. Over the place redstone all of these of course and repeaters at the right distances. There we go. Number three. So if we look at my X position here, uh, I'm starting at about 133, 133, I'm ending at the 133 through to 270, so that's about 137 blocks. Um, yeah, with a simulation distance of 12 chunks, um, 16 blocks per chunk, uh, and what does that give me? Uh, 192 blocks maximum uh, distance in a radius around me, as it turns out. Um, so at 192 block radius, um, if I stood right at the end of the machine or the memory, then this would be just within the simulation distance limit. And uh, yeah, we'd, we'd only be just able 
Uh, so yeah, 160-ish blocks, 192 maximum, there's just 32 blocks of space, and the address bus is going to take up another 16 at least. Not the address bus. This data output bus going into the registers is going to take up another 16 blocks from where it is now. So yeah, it's a really fine limit in terms of the edges of the machine. However, if you're stood in the middle of the machine, fine. You're well within the radius limit. So yeah, this machine is actually kind of within the limits I wanted. I wanted you to be able to stand pretty much anywhere within the middle 50% of the machine and it would work. And that's what we should have. Um, if you stand on the outer extremes or try and observe it from a big distance, then I guess if other players are in the in the game with you, the simulation will happen. And so it will be fine if it was multiplayer. But if it's sing if you're doing single player, then yeah, you have to be in that middle 50% machine for it to work. I'm really surprised that Minecraft lets me fast fly placing like this. Uh, whether it glitches out at any point. Oh, it did. <laughs> Speaking of... Okay, now I know that these signals actually go a bit further, but I don't care. I want them to standardize. Hmm. Yep, glitched out a lot. Never mind. Almost to the end of the output bus now. And when we are, that will be our memory essentially completed. Then just a case of building all the remaining little bits and pieces, like the control circuitry and uh, yeah, so that's done. So there we go, that's our completed memory. We did the uh, data input buses, these things on this side this morning, or sorry, earlier this afternoon, and we did the data output buses just now, including fixing up uh, the one tick pulse bug with our data latches. Um, we're also going to need to fix that one tick pulse on the enable and clock and everything of these registers. Um, deal with that in the future. Um, yeah, I'm just going to write that down. Yeah. Um, so I think Tomorrow, it's a case of getting the inputs to the registers multiplexed, uh, ready for the arithmetic unit lines to come around as well, 
and linking up that data output bus. Um, so that will do the A, B and the low four bits of the operand register. And then when the ALU bus comes around, that will control uh, the other alternative for the A and B registers. Um, and then for the program counter, we'll be able to choose between the arithmetic unit output the, and the program counter addition, uh, which needs to be built. And then, yeah, the operand register, we still need a way for shifting the low four bits into the high four bits and controlling the high four bits uh, enable and clock separately um, from the low four bits. So that's going to take a bit of fiddling around with the circuitry to make that work. Um, and then we need to build a four bit opcode register. Um, which I might try and slot into the middle here. And we need to build our clock and phase control. We can build our little bit of logic unit and then we'll have all the signals necessary to build our control path onto this thing. So there's still a few more days work. Um, we're on day six at the moment. A few more days. Yeah, we might get this done in 10 days uh, as originally planned. Let's find out. Uh, so thanks for watching. See you tomorrow. Um, yeah, we're getting there.